you're being lowered into the water in a 22 foot long submersible called Titan, about to have the experience of a lifetime. You're going 13,000 feet below the ocean surface, a feat only a handful of people can say they've done. So you enter the water, five people in total, all slowly descending to the depths of the ocean. Further and further down you go, 1,000 feet, then 3,000, then 6,000 feet, going deeper, so deep that the sunlight starts to fade away as you start to only see darkness outside of the one circular window. And you can't help but feel the sense of isolation, knowing how far from any other human you are, going somewhere almost as alien as Mars. After eight hours of waiting and only seeing a pitch black abyss beyond the small window inside the submersible, you see it. The bow of the Titanic. Oh my god, here's the bow, guys. The reason you came. An incredible look into the past. You're taken aback by the sight, seeing something that only the elite of the explorer community can say they've seen. When all of a sudden, a strong current pushes you into the wreck of the Titanic. You and someone in the Titan scream as you're thrown and entangled into the wreckage. When the dust settles and you realize where you are, you know the realities of these kinds of situations. You're 13,000 feet below the ocean surface in a cramped 22 foot long cabin, knowing that help and any other submersible able to go down to the depths that you are is days away. Less than 90 hours left of life support as the hours start to tick away. What started as an incredible adventure has turned into a nightmare. You bang on the walls, hoping that someone will hear. Search crews continue hearing underwater noises. But your hope fades away along with the hours. Indeed, searchers refocus their efforts based on the uncertain noises. As time starts to run out, you reminisce on your life. You hold your son's hand for one last time, hoping that someone will come and save you. No search efforts have not yielded any results. 40 hours of oxygen remain. They expect the vessel has about 40 hours of breathable air remaining. 20 hours left. Experts say the group of five men could be out of oxygen in just a few hours from now. Now, only hours remain as you wait for what will inevitably come. Quite honestly, it now appears that that life support uh, has run out. This is what people thought happened. But to explain what truly happened that day, I have to talk about the person behind all of this and why this event was bound to happen. Stockton Rush is his name, the CEO and founder of OceanGate, the company behind these expeditions. And to say he was reckless and disregarded safety would be an understatement. But to understand what I mean, first let's talk about how unforgiving being 14,000 feet below the ocean surface is. The pressure is hundreds of times greater than it is on the surface. It's one Empire State Building made of lead sitting on top of you at that level. To be able to build something that handles that kind of pressure is not an easy feat. Historically, these kinds of submersibles, such as the Russian-built Mur, were made out of a 5 centimeter wall of nickel and steel. It was rated for depths as deep as 20,000 feet and was a 40,000 pound tank. Sure, it was cramped and old, but it was reliable and safe. Compare this to the Titan, which is made out of 5 inch thick carbon fiber with domes of titanium on both sides. It's a carbon composite. Is it designed for deep underwater pressure? It's completely inappropriate for, a, for a, a vessel that sees external pressure. And just to put it out there, carbon fiber had never been used in a submersible of this kind. I've broken some rules to make this. I think I've broken them with, with logic and good engineering behind me. The carbon fiber and titanium, there's a rule you don't do that. Well, I did. It also had parts from Camper World. I couldn't help noticing how many pieces of this sub seemed improvised. We can use these off-the-shelf components. I got these from uh, Camper World. We run the whole thing with this game controller. But all of this pales in comparison with the gross negligence that Stockman used when he decided that he would risk other people's lives and send them down into the depths of the ocean in this uncertified submersible. If I were designing a multi-seat vehicle where I intended to be the pilot, we'd go through all of the rigorous test protocols. And I think it was unconscionable that this group did not go through that rigorous process. I mean, it's not like he didn't know that this thing was dangerous. People warned him. In 2018, there was a lawsuit filed against OceanGate by former employee David Lockridge, who was fired for voicing concern over the structural integrity of Titan after failing to greenlight man testing. Also in 2018, there was a letter written by experts in the field of ocean exploration, outlining their concerns for how unsafe the the Titan is, saying, the current experimental approach adopted by OceanGate could result in negative outcomes, from minor to catastrophic, that would have serious consequences for everyone in the industry. But Stockman was not concerned.
concerned with safety. He wanted to innovate in the field of ocean exploration. He was trying to push the technology forward to make a larger submarines to go deeper, so he was taking risks. And he knew the risks involved in such experimental designs, having everyone who went aboard the Titan sign a waiver. An experimental submersible vessel that has not been approved or certified by any regulatory body and could result in physical injury, disability, emotional trauma, or death. Where do I sign? He even went so far as to launch the submersible in international waters to avoid the safety regulations that came with American waters. All of this being said, that didn't stop CEO Stockman from sending people down in Titan. And even with all of the safety concerns, there have been successful trips down to the Titanic in this submersible. But that would all change on June 18th, 2023. A group of five people, including the CEO himself, entered the Titan, and one hour and 45 minutes after entering the water, all communication was lost. It was later found that the submersible had a catastrophic implosion due to the pressures it was under, and that everyone on board died almost instantly. Catastrophic implosion. Following days of an international search for the missing Titan submersible, we now know it's likely the five men on board died instantly. This was corroborated by a debris field found near the Titanic, where they found pieces of the submersible. Pieces of the Titan submersible that imploded with five people on board have been retrieved from the ocean floor. I offer my deepest condolences to the families. This is such a sad story, and the worst part about it is it all could have been avoided if the proper steps and safety procedures were followed, but they weren't, and sadly people's lives were taken. And I can't help but draw parallels to the Titanic itself, a ship that was warned of ice fields numerous times, but did not heed the warnings. I try and warn him about the ice and he tells me to shut up. It kept going, and eventually sank, killing many people. And now, more than a hundred years later, the Titan follows the same fate. I can only hope this tragedy serves as a poster child for more regulation in an industry that lacks it so something like this doesn't happen again in the future.